world news tonight. Cyclone alert. Thousands evacuated as Cyclone Mishuang lashed South India, submerging Chennai. Avalanche of lava. 11 hikers killed and search on for 12 others as volcanoes erupt in Indonesia. Paris assault. Knifeman kills German tourists and wounds two others near France's Eiffel Tower. Mickey Mouse hits the streets. Today's Christmas parade commemorates 100 years of Disney. This is Ada Derana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Sanuvi Mudanayaka. Good evening and thank you for joining us for World News. We begin this week's broadcast in neighbouring India as the country faces severe weather conditions. The deep reduction over Bay of Bengal intensified into a severe cyclonic storm, Mijuang, today. Several areas across Tamil Nadu, including the capital city of Chennai, continue to be pounded with heavy rainfall and gustly winds. Several low-lying areas, including hospitals and many residential parts, witnessed inundation even as civic agencies personnel were involved in clearing the stagnant water. Trains and flight services have also been adversely affected due to the weather. The Chennai bench of the Madras High Court and all district courts in the city have been shut. Waterlogging has been reported in several parts of the city, such as Madhuroyar, Horur, Saligramam and Valsavakaram. Trees have been uprooted due to strong winds in many places. According to local media, at least 12 domestic outbound services, including to destinations like Ahmedabad, Thiruvannadapuram, were cancelled in Chennai. Similarly, 11 express trains from Chennai Central were also cancelled. Heavy rainfall is expected across Tamil Nadu and Andhra Pradesh due to Cyclone Michuang in coming days. Tamil Nadu has already declared a public holiday in the wake of the warning of bad weather. The administration has restricted the movement of all persons on the coastal areas near the seashore from 7 p.m. yesterday until 6 p.m. on the 5th of December, Tuesday. The step has been taken to prevent any loss of life or property. Moving on to Indonesia, at least 11 hikers were found dead today and another 12 were missing after a volcano erupted in Indonesia, with rescuers racing to carry injured and burned survivors down the mountain on foot. 11 hikers have been found dead near the crater of Indonesia's Marapi volcano after it erupted over the weekend. Three people were rescued earlier today and the search for 12 others missing has been suspended due to a small eruption. There were 75 hikers in the area at the time of the eruption, but most were safely evacuated. Mount Marapi, one of Indonesia's 127 active volcanoes, spewed ash as high as 3 kilometers into the air on Sunday. Authorities have imposed a second highest alert level and prohibited residents from going within 3 kilometers of the crater. Local disaster agency official Ade Setiawan said in a statement that residents in local villages were given masks and were reminded to stay inside their houses. 49 climbers were evacuated from the area earlier today and many were being treated for burns. Abdul Malik, head of Padang Search and Rescue Agency, told local media that out of the 26 people who have not been evacuated, three were found alive and 11 were found dead. Video footage of Sunday's eruption showed a huge cloud of volcanic ash spread widely across the sky and cars and roads covered with ash. Authorities distributed masks and urged residents to wear eyeglasses to protect them from volcanic ash. Rescue workers took turns carrying the dead and the injured down the mountain's arduous terrain and on to waiting ambulances with blaring sirens. Jodi Hariawan, spokesperson for the local search and rescue team, told reporters that it would be too dangerous to continue searching while the volcano was erupting. The 2,891-meter-high Mount Marapi is located on Indonesia's westernmost Sumatra Island. About 1,400 people live on Marapi slopes in Rubai and Gobakumachang. The nearest villages are 5 to 6 kilometers from the peak. Abdul Mohari said Marapi's alert level was maintained at the third highest level of four levels and confirmed that authorities had been closely monitoring the volcano after sensors picked up increasing activity in recent weeks. The Indonesian archipelago sits in the so-called Pacific Ring of Fire where the meeting of continental plates caused high volcanic and seismic activity. Next in Pakistan. Gunmen attacked a bus near the town of Chilas in northern Pakistan, killing at least nine passengers and wounding dozens, according to the district and regional officials. 
Nine people, including two off-duty army personnel, were killed when gunmen opened fire on a bus traveling through northern Pakistan, causing it to crash into an oncoming truck and catch fire. Muhammad Ali Johar, a spokesperson for the regional government, said the attackers opened fire on the bus in the evening and the wounded were taken to a local hospital. Ghulam Abbas, a spokesperson for the Gilgit Baristan police, said that two soldiers were among those killed. According to Abbas, another 26 passengers were wounded in the attack, some with bullet injuries. The bus was travelling the Karakarab Highway, one of the highest roads in the world. According to officials, the attack took place in the evening when the attackers opened fire at the bus and it subsequently collided with an oncoming lorry. No group immediately claimed responsibility for the attack and the motive for the shooting was unclear. Shilaz lies in the mountainous regions of Gilgit, Baltistan, near the northwestern province of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, where attacks have been rising in recent years, including some claimed by the Pakistani Taliban or Tariq e Taliban Pakistan. Shilaz is a popular stopping point for tourists and is also near a China backed dam under construction. The attack came amid an uptake in armed attacks across the country, particularly in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and southwestern Balakistan. Both provinces border Afghanistan. In July, a suicide bomber detonated explosives at a political rally in northwestern Pakistan's Bajar district, killing at least 44 people and wounding nearly 200. According to officials last month, a Pakistan Air Force base came under attack in central Punjab province, which the military said was repulsed successfully. Over in the Philippines, Islamic State militants claim responsibility for a deadly bombing at a Catholic mass yesterday that killed at least four people and injured 50 others. The attack was carried out in a university gymnasium in Marawi, a city in the south of the country, besieged by Islamic militants for the five months in 2017. Several people have been killed in a bombing in a Catholic mass in the southern Philippines on Sunday. At least 50 others were injured in the explosion in the city of Marawi. These government photos shared online show the immediate aftermath of Sunday's attack, which took place in a university gym. Although there appears to be no damage to the building, burn marks can be seen in the centre of the room. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. has condemned the incident as a heinous act perpetrated by foreign terrorists. At a press conference, Philippine defence officials vowed to find those responsible. We shall need no stone and turn in order to root out the perpetrators of this heinous crime. Uh, let us remember that this was done in a religious uh, occasion uh, in, in, in Marawi, and uh, the intent really to uh, foment a terrorist, acti a terrorist uh, activity of to, to foment confusion, chaos, is a prime indicia of a terrorist activity. Defence Secretary Gilberto Teodoro further confirmed there were strong indications of a foreign element in the bombing, but refused to elaborate so as to not compromise the ongoing investigation. In 2017, the city of Marawi was besieged for five months by Islamist militants. During the battle between those fighters and Philippine forces, more than a thousand people were killed, including civilians. Sunday morning's attack follows a series of military operations against local pro-Islamic state groups in the southern Philippines. Both the police and the military have strengthened security in the country's south and around the capital, Manila. To dive deep into the U.S. election updates, he has road to the White House now. On the campaign trail, the battle for Iowa is heating up, with former President Donald Trump and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis both campaigning in the state. At a campaign rally in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, former President Donald Trump kept his focus largely on President Biden and the general election. If Joe Biden wants to make this race a question of which candidate will defend our democracy and protect our freedoms and I say to Crooked Joe, and he's crooked, the most corrupt president we've ever had. We will win that fight, and we're going to win it very big. The rally comes on the heels of the latest legal setback for the GOP frontrunner, a federal judge denying two motions by Mr. Trump's lawyers to dismiss the election interference case against him. I'm being indicted for you. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. 
Trump's appearance in Iowa is providing a political split screen with one of his main Republican rivals. Are you ready to make history, Iowa? Florida Governor Ron DeSantis completing his tour to all of Iowa's 99 counties to appearing alongside the state's two most coveted endorsements, Governor Kim Reynolds and evangelical leader Bob Vanderplatz. Right now, we need somebody to know that they fear God, they don't believe they are God. And while former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley wasn't on the trail in Iowa today, she's been rising in polls around the country and here as well, with many caucus goers still considering their options ahead of January's first presidential contest. Come back. Updates on the resumed fighting at the Israeli Hamas battleground next. Unrelenting bombing in Gaza continues, with claims there have been 800 deaths since the ceasefire ended. The USS Kearney was operating in the Red Sea when Pentagon officials say it and commercial vessels came under attack. The naval warship shooting down a drone heading towards it while responding to a distress call. The Pentagon says it also intercepted three cruise missiles and other drones. <laughs> Yemen's Iran-backed Houthi rebels say they targeted two Israeli ships that ignored warnings. The IDF says they weren't Israeli. It's the same group that hijacked a cargo ship, believed to have Israeli links, in the Red Sea last month, releasing this footage. <laughs> In Gaza, the ceasefire is already a distant memory. Airstrikes have been relentless since the truce was broken. Hospitals, though still operational, overrun with the wounded. In some cases, patients are treated on the floor. In Gaza City, a little boy covered in dust cries for his dead brother. Bury me with him, he says. The IDF has been warning Gazans in parts of Khan Yunus to leave and head to designated safe zones as its operations focus on Hamas strongholds in the south. Where an apartment building stood, a search for survivors following another airstrike. There's growing public pressure, most notably in recent days, from the United States for Israel to do more to protect civilian lives. The job of the military is to protect the civilians. Hamas, in a perverted way, warps that, inverts that, and says what? the job of the civilians is to protect Hamas's military machine. For now, round-the-clock fighting continues, and there's no indication another temporary ceasefire is close. A French man suspected of killing a German Filipino tourist with a knife and wounding two other people in France's capital Paris has pledged allegiance to Islamic State. French authorities said they were investigating the killing near the Eiffel Tower as a terrorist attack. The following visuals of this story is graphic. Viewer discretion is strictly advised. A German tourist is dead and two other people were hurt after an attack by a man armed with a knife and hammer near the Eiffel Tower in Paris. French President Emmanuel Macron described the incident as a terrorist attack. Que l'auteur des faits avait enregistré une vidéo on Sunday, French anti-terrorism prosecutor Jean-Francois Ricard said the suspect recorded a video beforehand that was released on social media. In it, he pledged allegiance to the Islamic State. Ricard also told the news conference that the probe currently underway was open for murder and attempted murder in connection with a terrorist organization. Police quickly arrested the 26-year-old man who is a French national after subduing him with a taser stun gun. Interior Minister Gerald Dermanin told reporters on Saturday. Dermanin said the suspect told police he was upset about the situation in Gaza as well as Muslims dying in Afghanistan and Palestine. This man, who lives near the site of the attack, told he feared future attacks. If we look at the news of the moment, you can't be completely surprised by that. Since those are random attacks, it's very complicated to prevent, he said. The suspect had previously been sentenced to four years in prison in 2016 for planning another attack and had been on the French Security Service's watch list, Darmanin said. He added that the suspect was also known to have psychiatric disorders. France has been on high alert since raising its security threshold in October when a Chechen origin man with a knife killed a teacher at a school in northern France. 
Next, in Australia, people released from indefinite immigration detention following a High Court ruling last month could be re-detained if they are found to pose an unacceptable risk of committing a serious violent or sexual offence under new legislation to be proposed by the Albanese government. Christmas in the capital and a government desperate to put a bow on the year. But not for all. Cabinet signing off on changes to migration laws upended by the High Court. The new orders will apply only to non-citizens who have committed serious, violent or sexual offences punishable by more than seven years imprisonment. The government tonight refusing to say how many former detainees the amendments would apply to. So there are approximately 140 people who've been released because of the High Court decision. It would be my estimate that very, very few of them would even have an application made for them. The regime that the government's providing might have application to two or three or four people. Courts would impose the penalty if a judge deems the detainee poses a high degree of probability of reoffending. Sentences can be up to three years in a domestic prison with annual reviews of the decision. The sad reality of their inaction, of their inadequacies, of their hopelessness, uh, is that some of these offenders are likely to re-offend. These people are being released as a consequence of the High Court decision, which struck down laws that you had in place. And the High Court may act again with challenges already lodged. South Korea's military successfully communicated over the weekend with its first military reconnaissance satellite. The launch comes not long after Pyongyang's own spy satellite launch last month. Three, two, one, ignition. The SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket lifted off from California's Vandenberg Space Force Base on Saturday at 3.19 a.m. Korea Standard Time. It carried South Korea's first military reconnaissance satellite into space. South Korea's defense ministry said the satellite was placed in orbit and succeeded in communicating with a foreign ground station at 4.37 a.m. Korea time. And at 9.47 a.m., the satellite made communication with a South Korean ground station as well. The satellite will pass by the Korean peninsula twice a day and is expected to provide surveillance on North Korea. The defense officials added the South Korean military has secured a, quote, independent space surveillance and reconnaissance capability from the launch. We asked one of the top experts in aerospace engineering here in South Korea how Seoul's satellite is different from Pyongyang's. We have a very good, you know, the, like improved satellite system, including the Earth observation payload camera system. So we, we can produce those very high resolution satellite system comparing to North Korean capability. Defense Ministry officials said the South Korean satellite can identify objects less than 30 centimeters in size from an altitude of 400 to 600 kilometers. This is much better than Pyongyang's spy satellite, which reportedly has a limited resolution range of around 3 meters per pixel. But Professor Zhang warned that a single satellite won't nearly be enough to detect Pyongyang's nuclear threats in real time, which is why the South Korean military plans to launch more by 2025. Korean military plans to launch four additional satellites that are implementing SAR payload system. SAR means SAR, which is representing synthetic aperture radar. Okay? That is able to take images in very high resolution without regard to day or night and any weather condition. Professor Zhang added that South Korea may need to send many more satellites into space to detect Pyongyang's threats, giving us a glimpse of the need to prepare for space diplomacy. Welcome back. Spotify, the music streaming giant, declared a second round of layoffs, trimming 17% of its workforce. More on that story and more. Let's take around the world. Music streaming giant Spotify said that it will lay off around 1,500 employees or 17% of its headcount 
to bring down costs after letting 600 of its employees go in January and 200 more in June. Health officials from China, Japan and South Korea met in Beijing yesterday to hold their 16 tripartite ministries meeting to exchange experiences and discuss future cooperation. At least 20 people have been killed by floods after heavy rain in the Manyara region of northern Tasmania. A man wielding a state knife killed four members of his extended family, including two children, at a home in the Queensboro of New York City, U.S. before being shot dead by police. Twice World Player of the Year, Bearden Barrett will look to continue his All Blacks career next year under new coach Scott Robertson after signing a deal through the 2027 World Cup cycle. That is all we have for you on World News Tonight. Join us again tomorrow as we bring you updates from across the globe. If you miss any of today's programs, you can always rewatch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. Tonight, we are leaving you in Chile, where children and adults were delighted at a Christmas parade that paid tribute to the Walt Disney Company for its 100th anniversary. Thank you for watching. Have a great night.